Hi, my name's Stuart Lynch. At WWDC 24, Apple announced a new mesh gradient view. So in order to understand it better, I decided to create a Mac app that would allow me to play around with it and to use it. And this is the result. When you launch the app, you get an image of a 6.1 iPhone with a mesh gradient displayed on it, and it has a 4x3 grid of points. Now each row uses a different symbol to represent the row, and on the right, you'll see the colors assigned to each point and its coordinates within the coordinate space, and that runs from 0 to 1, uh, both horizontally and vertically. Now you can switch between display types if you like to see what it would look like in different device types and orientations, but it doesn't really matter which one you choose. The results are going to be the same. Well, you can change the number of points by adjusting the grid size. Now, I'm going to go back to 4x3. If you adjust the inner points, the outer edges remain. And you can change the colors of any of the points you like. So I'm going to replace all of the red points with bluish ones. And I'm going to do the same for the yellow. Now, this is a nice image. If you adjust the outside points, the background is revealed. And it's transparent when used on your device. So whatever your background is, that's what will be displayed. And I'm on a Mac now, and that background is in dark mode. Now, I can create some pretty spectacular effects by doing this. And I can add a shadow if I like to. Now, if you don't want a shadow, you can turn it off and choose to add a different background. I'm going to go back to None, but I'll keep the shadow. Once you have what you want, you can show the code and copy it for a project of your own. And you can do that either by using the toolbar button or the corresponding menu. Now this will present the code in a text view that you can copy to your clipboard. Now I'm going to start a new Xcode project and I'll create a new iOS app. Now, once the app is launched, I'm going to replace the body of the content view with the contents of that clipboard. But I'm going to get some errors because that gradient view uses a color view and its initializers, unless you use the standard colors like blue or teal, etc., well, your code can't get displayed as text. So I needed that for my app. So I created extensions for UI color, NS color, and the color view that allow me to extract the hex color value when I created the code snippet. And then I recreate the color view on the device for that hex value. And that's why the color initializer here looks strange. So you'll need my two extensions here. And there's a link in the code that you can just simply click on to open or right click and choose open link. And that'll take you to my GitHub repo. So you can download and expand the zipped file. Once it's been expanded, you can simply drag those two extension files into your project, making sure that you copy it and make sure it gets added to the right targets because these are cross-platform extensions that work for either iOS or macOS. And once you do that, your screen here fills with that nice mesh gradient view. And I can add an ignore safe area here to have it expand to the whole screen. Now, the desktop background you see here was created using this app. Now, I'm going to return to the app, and I want to export that mesh gradient view that I can use as a desktop image in the future. So first, I'm going to move all those points out to the entire edge of the screen so that it's covered. And I'm also going to move the points from the display so I can see the gradient view better. And I'll just change to an iPad 13 so you'll get a better idea as to what the desktop background would look like. As I said, it doesn't matter what you choose, though. It's always going to export an image that's 1920 by 1080. So just click on the Save Image button, or you can use the menu option. Give your image a name and then save it. Now you can use it as your own custom desktop image. Well, you can get this Merge Creator app from the link in the description. It does require macOS 15 Sequoia, but it's free and you can play around with it. And if you want to support my work, though, you can buy me a coffee. Enjoy.